25th chapter of the book of Matthew. But I want you this morning before you start to go back to the 24th chapter. You might not know it, but the Hurricane Matthew. I asked God, why would you name a hurricane after the first book in the New Testament, Matthew? And he led me to Matthew's, the 24th chapter, which is the end of the age. Amen. That means the end of the church age. Amen. Amen. We're in the church age now, but we're coming to an end. But he also said that the church that believed in me will be raptured out Amen. before the end comes. Amen. That's right. Now when this church is raptured out, Amen. we will go and be with the Lord. Amen. He said, but after the church leave here, there are going to be seven years of tribulation. Amen. Hell here on earth. Yeah. And the Christ will come and take charge. But the first three and a half years, he's going to be working with Israel, my people. And Israel is going to accept him as their Savior. Amen. I said, why would you do that? And I said, because Israel today is not saved. And that's why I organized the church, the church age, to bring my people back into my kingdom. So we as a church now have a great responsibility. Amen. We are to do what the Lord has called us to do. And that lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. So that God's chosen people, which are the Israelites, will come back in to the tree. Amen. Because they have been plucked out. And we were drafted in. He also told me that, that we must pray for Israel. Amen. Because they are my chosen people. Amen. Amen. But Matthew book is to the Jews. Because they're the ones that need to be saved today. Yeah. They are lost. Yeah. And I said, well, God, uh, what else you want me to say? Well, let them know that uh, the book of Matthew is for them. That book is written for the Jews. Amen. But he also said, I've, I've written another book which is the book of Luke, which is for the Gentiles. Amen. And then he also told me something this morning that the, it didn't make sense when he started. He said, but God has ordained the family here on earth, but the devil is trying to break the family up. He said, now, Matthew lets us know what's going to happen so we will not be surprised when that time comes. But it said the family is the trinity here on earth. You have the Father, which is Joseph. You have the Holy Spirit, which is Mary. And we have Jesus, which is whom he is. That's the trinity here on earth, you let me know. Father, what else? Mother. Mother Amen. Which represents the, uh, uh, the, the Holy Spirit. Amen. And Jesus himself. Amen. As Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And God is trying to break the family up because if you break the family up, there is no trinity here on earth. And we wonder why the family is having so much trouble today because the devil has stepped in and disorganized the family. The family that God ordained is woman and man. And until we get back to that formula of plan, the world is on its way to hell. But the church, we did not have to go there because we have accepted Jesus as our Savior. And the 24th chapter lets us know what's going to go on. But then as I read the ninth verse of the 24th chapter, it said, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. That is us. But God also is going to bless us. Pray Lord, I'm ready because I, I, I cried.
because I want God to reveal to me just not just just branches around here, but the, the world outside of that because we have too many churches now are uh, preaching other than the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we have denomination now. Watch who you listen to on TV. We have denomination bringing down other denomination. So I had to ask God, I asked God to forgive me. Forgive me, God, for speaking against the Catholics. Because I, God said, you do not know whom I have that is working for me other than you. So I cried. And then he said, you need to check and find out the difference of these denominations. The doctrine might be different, but I don't care what they call themselves if they know that Jesus Christ is my son and I sent him to earth and they still serve him as the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They can call themselves anything and they are my people. But we got to be very careful because uh, I don't mind. But we have a, a, a Pentecostal, one of the largest organizations in the world today, growing fast. But they're saying some things that the Holy Spirit is letting me know don't listen to that because we still got some Catholic people going to heaven. I heard somebody help me this morning. Because I, they said that uh, uh, they worship in Mary. Well, if you check it truthfully, they don't worship Mary. They use Mary because she, Mary is the mother of our nation. Now that, that's another story. But God let me see that this morning. And, 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 and Joseph is the father. But he also used God to impregnate Mary. And through that impregnation, she became the mother of our nation. And she also give the first son. We know she had other son, but she gave the first son. Because I heard it read there, so I can't remember right now, where he asked, he asked uh, uh, Jesus uh, that uh, your mother and father is outside here. Uh, do you want them to come in? Us to pray for he, he said, who is my mother and father? He said, all of you are my mothers and fathers. So God let me know that Mary with Jesus, Mary became the mother of all of us and God became our father through Mary. I'm just saying it because we got to be very careful because the devil is having us pulling down his stronghold. In a denomination, whatever you call yourself, if the top line is Jesus the Christ, I don't care what other, other doctrine put in. A doctrine has no saving power. They can believe what they want to believe. But if this, except Jesus has the Savior. Believe that he died and he went to heaven and seated at the right hand of God. You can call yourself anything because when the disciples came back and said, told Jesus, but there's some people over there calling your name and they're one of us. And Jesus said, well, if they firm it, they can't be against them. So in a nation, in a denomination, whatever they are, if they're for him, they cannot be against him. But God having us as, 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 as men and women pulling down on the denomination. Right. When we should be following the word of God. Because that's why he lived in, the, in other words, uh, the church is going to be raptured out. It's going to be seven years of hell. But after that tribulation period, Christ is coming back. Yeah. And he's going to bring us back with him. He don't need us. He just going to let us come back and see the joy of the Lord. Yeah. We talk about it, And we're going to see what he's going to do. And when he come back, he's going to set up the millennium period. Why the millennium period? Millennium period is not for you not. The millennium period is for the Jews. He's elected people. It's going to take a thousand years to get those hardened Jews back in the line. Help me, Holy Ghost. It's not for us. Because we his church. We all are the same. But the Jews are unsaved. And the only way the Jews can be saved, they're going to have to accept Jesus as their Savior. Yes. If you notice now, there are a lot of Jews for Jesus. But the majority of the Israelites is going back to Israel now, they're lost. They do not know that Jesus is the Son of God.
And that's why we as a church must make sure we are not fighting each other, but fighting that power in high places, not flesh and blood. I don't know why God told us to say all that, but, but we as a church, and then after, in the millennium period, there will be two types of people. Those that have been filled with the Holy Spirit died and come back to earth. And then there are going to be those that are saved through the tribulation which have not died. So in the millennium period, the thousand years, you're going to have flesh and blood and spirit working together. Read the word. God has led me to teach the book of Revelation, the book of Daniel, for, for quite a few times. And during this thousand year period, there will be two types of people left in the millennium period. Those that have been washed in the blood and those that have been saved. But then that, that's why at the end of that thousand year period, when the devil is turned loose, many are going to follow him because they did not accept Christ during that thousand year period. Amen. Not the church now, but hey, we are saved. What are you saying, Brother Preacher? That's why we must make sure that our job today is to make sure that the Jews come into the kingdom of God. Amen. That's all the reason why God created us, because during that the thousand year period, they also are going to have 144,000. I'm teaching you something now that I won't be preaching in, in, in the kingdom. None of these preachers be preaching. We be led by the 144,000, which is the Jews that God elected to start with to be our priests. Are you following me? I could go on and on and on, but he won't be telling you this because sometimes we forget what God has called us. I'm not going to be able to cut a little short now, but the subject we're going to use today. In two little words that make so much difference. Um, I, I, the scripture has been read. Sponsor reading has been read, which is all the same. But the two little words that's going to make so much difference, we said all of them, is well done. Amen. Well done is life everlasting given by God. But there are other words that mean so much to you and I today. Speaking the words, we must be very careful with words we use when speaking to our loved ones. Don't miss this now, words. When we get angry sometimes with a loved one, we say, I wish you were dead. Well, those words come out of your mouth, you don't mean it, but you speak it into action. Or you say to your children, you, you do not amount to anything. That's why we have so many young men and women growing up mouth to nothing because you put a curse on them when they were young. Yeah. You would not mouth to anything. And then uh, you, 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 you tell it you just like your no good daddy. Well, you married that no good daddy. Words that mean so much. Words that become reality. I say words that become reality, but what you speak out of your mouth, that's what will happen. Watch what you speak. And I'm going to say again, uh, we, use the word, we use God's language, a name in vain and not knowing it. You've heard it before. Because God only had one name. He has a lot of names that, 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 that the man has given him because God appears certain places and he gave him a name that the place that he appeared. But God only gave himself one name. Because when Moses looked at the, at the burning bush, he told him to go down and set my people free. Moses said, who should I say sent me? Tell him, I am. I am. So God's name is I am. And when you say, I am sick, you use his name, help me, Holy Ghost. Amen. When you say, I am sick, you use his name in vain. Because the word says you are healed. Amen. I am broke. Use the name in vain. Could say, I'll supply your needs according to my riches. And I go, oh, no, no, Watch how you use that name, I am. Well, I am is excellency. Help me, Holy Ghost. Anyhow, my mom would say, watch your mouth, boy. Don't let me shut it up for you. <laughs> that meant Solomon. He would say, she would say, speak when spoken to. Then choose your word before you speak. Hurricane Matthew tour. When you hear it, you think of destruction. 
And when you look at it on TV, all kind of things run through your mind. It's only two words. And then the words we hear when we watch the news has an effect on our lives. Words we read or see and hear watching movies will control how we live. Words are powerful. We must hear the right word. All the way you hear the right word is read the word of God. Yeah. Follow me now. Words are controlling the presidential election. Words that are spoken is messing this world up. The God said when this election is over with, the earth is going to be in worse shape than ever been in before. Whoever becomes president, we got to pray for them. Because God puts in control who He wants to. Yeah. We have no control over nothing. That's right. So we need to pray for both of them. Amen. So why? The, sometimes we hear the why me? Two words. Why me? Or we say the word too much. Then we have a, a, a two words says red light. When you hear those two words, you know you gotta stop. Then you see another word said uh, 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 green light. Two words, but you, you let you know you can go. But you, words control our living, and it doesn't take a lot of words; it only take two words. But because in the day when there is so much talk of power and force, it's well to remember that nothing is more powerful than words. Words rightly used, they can bring about peace and life. For evil words can bring about death and destruction. Yes. The tongue is life or death. Yes. Words by God put this world into action. He can speak it out the same way. We talk about words. Little words with great meaning. Well, when somebody gets married, you say, I will. In the marriage vows, the apostle promises. It might be well for our young people to be reminded of the weight these words carry. Right. I will honor and obey until death do we part. <laughs> I will. Word that you put out there. But how soft it is that the words do not mean anything. They would say, I love you. Yeah, in human relationships are in their words. I love you. How shameful is that they are tossed about so carelessly in a Hollywood fashion. Married today and divorced today. But we take the vow, I will. We include much myself. Not that do not say, uh, we, we do not, we, 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 we do not say about that. I'm talking about, I love it. Nobody use that word enough. But when we use it, don't use it loosely. Because God told us you can fulfill all the commandments if you love that neighbor as you love yourself. Amen. God knows you can't, you couldn't keep the old 12 commandments. That was under a different covenant. But now we're under grace. And where there is no grace, there is no sanctification. And where there is no sanctification, there is no life. What are you saying, Brother Preacher? Words. Through words, much come to pass. But few words sound better to the human ear than well done. This is true in the home. Tell somebody that you do, whatever they do is well done. That's why I like what happened here today with the kids committee. She was saying, well done. It might not mean too much to you, but it means a lot to them and God himself. Amen. This is true at work. Amen. All right, play. Two little word, well done. Amen. The house of God is still saying, well done. We come together and we find fault. Right. Overlook the goodness that God has done for us. When you wake up in the morning, check your life, look what God has brought you from. Yes. When you were no good, He saved your soul, died for you. 
You may not have a, a Rockefeller bank account, but if you got everlasting life, you are rich. Have somebody here now. Well done. In the kingdom of God. We are living in the kingdom of God. We have a king that will take care of all of our needs. Note in the Bible reading that all were given a task or a title. No one was left without something to do. Everyone in this branch of Zion, God has given us something to do. Such as a task or a title. Don't wait for someone to ask you. You step up and ask, what can you do in God's house? Happy Holy Ghost. We have people willing to spend trillions of dollars looking for healers in space. Why can't they help the poor here on earth? Russia and America are putting billions of dollars, billions of dollars together trying to get to the stars and can't live together here on earth. Russia and America fight each other every day, but they can pull the money together to go up in space and mess with heaven. And they're all going to hell. There's anything I can do to help this church, that should be our attitude. Speak, speak the gospel and live the gospel and God is going to bless all of us. I'm going to cut some of this out. But it takes all of us to fulfill the work of the church and the church work. He was thus required of the Lord. They and now were according to the ability of the servant. God would not ask us to do anything we are not capable of doing. You notice he gave one five, one two, and one one. But he did not judge them by the amount that he gave them. They were judged by the way they used what God had given them. The word well done was put forth effort and energy to please the Lord. But the one who with fear hid his tower was cast out of the vineyard. And I wonder how many come to church day after day, Sunday after Sunday, that will be cast into the vineyard. Not use your towel. Or use it for the wrong reason. Want to be patted on the back. The blessing is here on earth and not in heaven. They do not use a towel for God. Or never ask for a task to be used. That's why I, I, I love this young man here. He's not been where he's always been right now. He has used some bad language. But he repented and asked God to forgive him. And God can use him right now. Amen. We must remember that God is in control. Yes, he is. Even so, God never expects of us more than our ability. Now when he asks or assigns us a task that's too large for us to do. Amen. What did God be worship and serve? Amen. He is not a respectable person. Amen. What he did for me, he'll do for you. Amen. And what he did for Reverend John, he'll do for all of us. Amen. God will build a hedge around you yeah. and protect you from all harm and death. Yeah. Yeah. We have because we ask Amen. and believe it. Faith is receiving Amen. what you already have. Well done. Well done. Well done will make a great difference to all of us. Well done will be heard only by those who are faithful in their service to God. Not coming to church for sure, but for lifting up the hand and the name of Jesus. Looking to the hills which come along by heaven. All I have to come from God. We don't look for the government for heaven. We don't look for the president of heaven. We look to God. Amen. The president needs our prayers. Amen. Whoever they are, government needs our prayers because we are God's church. Amen. Well done. Amen. Ask yourself when I hear those two little words. Well done. Amen. Only you and God knows that. Amen. Those who would hear these precious words in their final days must have a vision and insight for God. Amen. Without a vision, we perish. Do you have a vision for your life? Why do you wish to spend eternity? Amen. John 14, 1 said, Let not your heart be troubled. 
If you believe in God, be all sure me. In my father's house will be a mansion. Say, we're not to a word. I'm going to prepare a place. If I come, I'm going to take you where. But to go to that prepared place, you got to be a prepared person. How do you come to a prepared place? Ask God to forgive you. Give, give God some need time. Pray to God. Thank Him for what He's already done. I don't know about you, but I miss myself in heaven. I walk with my brother Jesus. Because the word said he walks with me, talks with me, tells me I have his own. Oh, I don't know about you, but I won't belong to God. Yes. Two in the world. Yes. I am. Yes. And I am somebody. Yes. I am a child of God. Yes. I am Jesus' son. Yes. I am what God asked me to be. Yes. All the works that man will do, however must be, yes. must be prefaced by the spirit of birth Amen. into the kingdom of God. To the word, born again. Yes. Born again. Yes. You'll never hear well done Amen. unless you born again. Yes. We must be born again yes. to hear the truth of the word. Amen. That will make a difference. Yes. All of us enjoy hearing the words well done. Amen. But think how wonderful it will be at the end of this whole life way. Amen. To hear the jurors of all ages say, Well done, that good and faithful servant. Yes. In to the joy of the Lord. Yes. Joy of the Lord. I know that joy. Yes. Joy when I'm down. Yes. Joy when I'm sick. Yes. Joy when I'm angry. Yes. Joy when I'm sad. Yes. I'm talking about joy. God can give you everlasting joy. Joy. Yeah, the song was it. Christ the blessed one. Give it to all. Wonderful words of life. Set us listen to the learning call. Wonderful words of life. All so really given. Wound after heaven. Wonderful words. Wonderful words. Wonderful words of life. Well done. Well done, that good and faithful servant. I want to hear him say well done. I said, I want to hear him say well done. He believed that Jesus is the Son of God. Born of a virgin. Lived, died, resurrected. You will hear God say, well done. A good and faithful servant. Yeah, and into the joy of the Lord. I believe Jesus is the world of sin. Joy of the Lord. He is the lily of the valley. Joy of the Lord. In the sick room, God of the Lord. He's a lawyer in the courtroom, God of the Lord. He's bread for you hungry. Don't you know Beth? He was born in Bethlehem. The word for Bethlehem is bread. That's why you meet the church is bread. That's why you meet he is the bread of life. Help me, Holy Ghost. He's a bright and morning star. God. He's our Savior. He became all above all. To make sure we have the tree of life. I don't know about you, but I love to call his name. His name is Jesus. Jesus. Heard the baby boy. Walked the sand and chose of Galilee. Opened blind eyes. Made the dumb talk and the lame walk. His name is Jesus. Joy. Everlasting joy. He's the joy of the Lord. The Lord is my life. My salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. I don't fear. Yeah, I would have feared it. Unless I had believed to see the Lord in the land of the living. Not by the sky. I want fear to see the kingdom. The kingdom is in you and I. Is he all right, sir? Is he all right? Say yeah. Say yeah. I'm talking about Jesus. One born in Bethlehem. Set him high. Set him wide. Yeah, for the turn down. Put him in the grave. Stay down. All day Friday. All Friday night. All day Saturday. All Saturday night. But earlier. Earlier. Did he get up? Did he get up? Is he alright? Say yeah.
got to make sure that every Jew possibly can be saved. Amen. That's God's plan. Amen. He organized the church to save the Jews. Amen. Because Israel right now is full of Jews. All of them on the way to heaven. Chosen people. Well, I told you this morning, we have too many Christians in the church. <laughs> what are you talking about, preacher? I preach, all of us preach to Christians every day. But we preach to few disciples. Jesus did not come to make Christians. Don't mess this, please. Christians was given the name of those that met at Antioch. But he came to make disciples. So just calling yourself a Christian does not please God. Unless you are a disciple. Yeah. And now yourself took the cross and followed him there. Telling men and women that they're on their way to hell. If they had not been baptized in the blood. Stand to your feet, please.